Awesome, awesome. Hey, welcome everybody. Uh, Ronda Dryden here with John and Jess Hines. How you guys doing today? Hey guys, we're trying to fix our light. It's pretty bright. <laughs> Looks good to me. I'm over back a bit. We're gonna start calling these webinars MBG TV because um, I, I have a feeling this is gonna be a, a kind of a pretty consistent thing. But uh, we're gonna name this MBG TV. While well, you guys are figuring that out, I'm gonna go through a couple of announcements before we get started. I'm really excited. We're gonna have Lucy, who's a, an online fitness uh, member uh, that just joined not too long ago. She's gonna be uh, having her 15 minutes of fame with John and Jess, a little uh, question to answer. Or if you just wanna have a cool dialogue, I'm looking forward to that. So 30 minutes into that, Lucy, we're gonna bring you on board. Um, we also wanna, uh, give you guys a heads up on the CNT course, the Certified Natural Trainer course. It's in April, the 22nd to the 24th in Madison. Um, there is early bird yeah. specials. And um, make sure you email Jessica at jessica at monkeybargym.com and she'll give you some more information about that, okay? You don't have to be a fitness professional. People go in there for the personal development. And in fact, most people do. Um, we also got the base course, which is a kind of a new course, and it's awesome. This is their secret sauce, okay? And that's going to be in March 19th. And email Jessica, uh, again, jessica at monkeybargym.com for that. We still have our uh, online fitness pre-sale program going on at $19.99 uh, per month, $20 per month. And uh, we're going to be raising the prices next month to $39.99. Um, once you sign up, you get lifetime access to that price with no price increase. Uh, we, uh, it's an amazing program. It's all mobile friendly. You get the base courses with John, you get the fitness training from John and Sean, and, uh, it's pretty awesome. So, uh, we do have a website for that. If you go, I just created a new website for this. So let me get it here. If you go to bit.ly forward slash MBG underscore online fitness. So that's B I T dot L Y forward slash M forward slash MBG underscore online fitness. And if you type that in there, it'll pop up with some more information. Is that is that embedded in the show notes? Because there's no way I would have written that down. Yeah, I'm going to email everybody that's attending too. So we'll we'll actually do like a screenshot. Okay. But, yeah. Um, yeah, let's get the let's get this uh, show started. What I what I titled this show, I think, because last time we talked, John and Jess, uh, you guys talked about how a lot of people don't don't know like. People look up to you as an authority figure. You guys are in the best in the world of what you do, of strengthening the body and healing the body. Tony Robbins still promotes you at his mastery programs. Uh, people look at you like, oh, yeah, of course they can do it. Man, they're experts. But you guys never were like this your whole life. That's, I think most people don't know that, uh, especially with Jess, too, working uh, from Jess. And, John, you've always been fit. So uh, what are some things that people probably should know about you guys before, you know, um, so that way they could uh, kind of get a better feel of what uh, – to where are they coming from and where you guys are coming from? Like, where'd you guys get started? Well, I, I got interested in the fitness world when I was real young because my dad, you know, doing the jump rope and doing the tubing for workouts and having pro athletes use those tools, I just was really small. I was, uh, when I was 19 years old, I was 130 pounds, uh, five foot eight, 130, all legs. Uh, I had. Oh. My arms were literally about that big, round. They were, I had no upper body at all. And wow. I, didn't, I didn't honestly even reach puberty until I was around 23. Mm -hmm. That's when I started to, uh, I think around 24 or so, when I actually first time I shaved, I was really a late bloomer. And uh, because of that, I had, I have a lot of empathy for people that, you know, aren't just naturally yoked and stuff like that because I had to go through so much struggle just to put muscle on my body hmm. and learn how to do that. And it's not just about lift heavy. You got to eat, you got to eat more. You got to lift heavier or do heavier type movements. You got to rest the body. There's a whole lot of different things that go into it. And the thing I never did, because I always thought more is better. I always overtrained when I first started working out and I would play basketball uh, I literally went from school right to the basketball place and I'd be there from four o'clock to midnight or 1am seven wow. days a week. Wow. I played basketball as much as anybody in the country and I was obsessed with it and, but it was also my reprieve from my home. So mm -hmm. that's what I did. And, uh, then Jesse's story is, is, is different, you know, yeah. and that's what's so cool about mine was I was really skinny and little 
and I had to learn how, how do you pack muscle onto a body and also let the body, you know, absorb the nutrients and things like that so you can grow properly. And that's happened in my 20s, you know, much later, like eight years later than most kids. Mm. And, and, and that was, that story in itself is very interesting to assess how that happened. Yeah. But um, Jesse's is, is different. Yeah. Yeah. I love to hear your story, Justin. Real quick, just to let people know, there's a and a button at the bottom of your screen with the Zoom uh, program. If you guys, we want to have a real dialogue with you. So if you guys have questions, even within them telling their story, so we're going to get into the Q and A's that you guys submitted afterwards, but um, just let us know if you guys have any questions while they're talking and just click on it and we'll just uh, fire away. But I'd love to hear your uh, story, Jess. Uh, I know you have an awesome story where you came from and where you're at right now. So. I mean, I grew up in an artistic household. They weren't really athletic. My dad's an artist and an art teacher, and my mom's a classical pianist and a writer. And it was all about, you know, listening to jazz and classical music and drawing, and it wasn't about athletics. Hmm. Um, but at one point, I got really interested in track and field, and that was uh, when I was in junior high. And I only did that in junior high. Mm -hmm. After that, I just kind of, I, I was very sedentary. Um, and then there, when I got to college, I, I started to get, you know, I'm 5'10", um, and I started to get really stressed out at this time in college, and I wasn't really able to handle things. And I got down to 112 pounds. And at 5'10", you know, and it wasn't like I was, you know, had an eating disorder or anything like that. I was just like, I'm just stressed out. Yeah. <laughs> so the weight just dropped. And then... Yeah. I didn't really realize until people, you know, I would hear people whispering about me, like, look how skinny that girl is. And then it just dawned on me that, wow, I, I'm really not doing too good here. So um, I decided to just eat all I could. Uh -huh. And I chose McDonald's and Taco Bell and all kinds of fast food hey. restaurants to put the weight back on because it kind of freaked me out how skinny I actually was. Uh -huh. so I would sit down and I would eat, you know, Typical meal would be at McDonald's would be two Big Macs, um, large fry. It would be a vanilla shake and if apple pie if I had room. That's a typical meal. Taco, Bell, Taco Bell was was a burrito supreme, a double two double decker tacos. I mean, I was like, and this is one sitting, and this is basically throughout the day how I would eat. And I blew up to 156 pounds. Wow. I'm but, sorry. Did you say two Big Macs? Is that what you said? Yeah. So yeah. one in each, one in each chance a balanced diet, right? Exactly. I was like, oh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I had to keep it even. But, um, yeah, I blew up. I put the weight back on, but I wasn't and doing some. yeah, and then some, and I wasn't doing any athletics. But again, five ten, I'm really long limbed, so it never really looked like I was big. I was that skinny fat, you know. Skinny uh, fat. Skinny fat. It's like what models are. They just, they have a lot of, they have a high body fat percentage, but they look, they're so spread out that it's all over the place. Interesting. Um, so I was, yeah. Yeah, it's a pretty common thing in the modeling world. They never work out and all they do is they do runway shows and stuff like that, but a lot of them never work out, but they, they get really skinny, but they're, since they don't have a high lean body mass, they have a lot of fat on a really skinny body. It's just they have it's almost zero muscle. Wow, oh, that's interesting. That's yeah. what Jessie was like when we met. Yeah. You know, she, she always looked trim. But it was starting to, it was starting to get weird. It was, it was, I was starting to notice it a lot on my midsection. And I had this thought once after something happened that kind of grossed me out. But I was sitting and my fat on my belly decided that it didn't want to be in the position it was and it shifted over to another side. Uh, oh my God. <laughs> I was like, okay, we must do something now. <laughs> <laughs> so it kind of migrated or what? <laughs> I, like, I don't want to be there. I want to be over here. And so that started, that was the first, you know, you know, thing that helped me start, started me moving into, you know, I need to do something. I can't just, you know, sit here. And um, soon after that, I went to the Monkey Bar Gym and I took a Pilates class that he had there. And I actually met John that day. And Oh, um, that's how you guys met, huh? You just walked in. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, 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 you know, he introduced himself and all this other kind of stuff. And then, you know, I didn't go back. <laughs> what? You know, it's funny because Mel Melody, Melody just joined our online fitness program. Uh, she's back. here uh, on the 
on right now, but dude, Jed, so much attitude. Right? Oh, like, really? Hey, how you doing? Um, I'm John. I'm the owner. Can I help you with anything? She goes, No, I'm fine. <laughs> what? And, and, and she sat down back on the couch and looked away, and I was like, Okay. And I looked at the I looked at the front desk guy. And I looked at Carlos and I, and I looked at her, him and go, man, she's fine. Oh, but man, look, the attitude is crazy. <laughs> well, he was just walking by. I didn't know who he was. And finally, he, I was like, you know, I don't know. I was all taken care of. So she brought you. You were all taken care of, huh? Carlos took care of me. So I was like, who's this dude? But then I didn't, I didn't come back to the monkey bar until um, my friend um, cool. came over to my house and said, get up. Let's go, because I was a person who sat at home and watched The Simpsons and ate food. Dope! Like, yeah, really. And she was like, get up, let's go. Come on, you're going with me. We're going to this party at the Monkey Bar Gym, a breakdancing party. <laughs> I was like, I don't want to go there. She's like, come on, let's go. So we go, and that's how I met John. And um, after that, John and I started hanging out, and he decided that he wanted to take my body fat one day. <laughs> <laughs> this was his subtle way of telling me you're fat, right? Dang. Uh, so, nice. Very yeah. tactful, John. <laughs> hey, you got I, game, I, boy. I, I, was like, I don't know if she's aware of it, you know. It, yeah, I, and I can tell, it. but I could tell she was a skinny fat type. Mm. And I and but I can also tell somebody that has, you know, I can tell she's has athleticism, she just never tapped into it. So we that's what's so remarkable about Johnny. He can see that, you know, in I, people. Yeah, and, um, and so we were at the gym one day, and I just, and I, I never wanted to say anything like, God, you're big, or anything like that. I would never say that. So I, I, what I, want, I just thought, well, maybe if, she, if we just do a body fat and she'll see where she's at, maybe then that will get her to start working out here. Because up until that point, she hadn't worked out there. She just took that Pilates class, and that was it. So I thought, well, um, maybe I'll just do a body fat and she'll see. And maybe it, then if she wants to make change or not, that's her call. And so I took a picture and I did her body fat and it sort of blew her mind. Mm -hmm. She was 36 and a half percent body fat. And if you understand what that is, that is basically in the obese category. Wow. <laughs> Even though I didn't look like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, thirty-six percent body fat is pretty high, and and even when we do uh, sixty-day fitness challenges, and I'm you know testing people's body fats, you know I find people who you know kind of float around where I was, mm -hmm. you know, and then quite a few people who don't. They're like lower than what I was, and I came in, you know, as one of the bigger people at the mm -hmm. Monkey Bar Gym, um, but it's been what. 12 years of training yeah. there and I can't you know the stats better than I do about how much muscle I well when she started she when she started her uh her lean body mass was actually under 100 under 100 huh yeah, yeah. and that's just I was um, barely if walking you take around. all the fat off a person that's their lean body mass just muscle connective tissue things like that bones Everything like that. It's how much they would minus their fat. And hers was under 100 pounds, I remember. Wow. And um, now, I mean, she's – depends on, like, getting ready for a fight. Her body fat's going down. So it might be, like, 17 now instead of 36.5%. And so that's uh, it's quite a humongous turnaround for a person, especially somebody that's so thin. Mm -hmm. Put on, you know, like her lean body mass is over 120 something now, and um, which is really, which is really good, especially because it's pure functional muscle. It's not mm -hmm. show muscle; it's go muscle. Yeah, that's a big difference. Yeah, big difference. And it's uh, Melody. She's on the webinar joining us. She just joined your uh, online fitness program. She just uh, right before we started, she wanted to know how you guys met, so you guys actually answered that. But she actually wanted to ask if it was at love at first sight. <laughs> well, <I'll, laughs> look, we're like, uh, no. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, the first time I saw her at the gym when she had the attitude, I did tell Carlos, man, she's fine as hell. Uh, uh, but that was the last time I didn't see her until May 11th, 2002. That's when I had that hip hop party. Uh -huh. When she walked in, I, I said to myself, uh, and um, I, I, um, I just said, I'm talking to her. Um, <laughs> and uh, I, I, 
asked her to dance and um we started dancing we danced the whole night and then we just started hanging out after that yeah that's awesome uh kelly just chatted right now she said uh just is amazing now and said don't call a woman fat if you know what's best for you or what's good for you oh, that's, <laughs> that's kelly moore hey girl <laughs> I, I, I didn't and i would not do that because my sister told me growing up she they said never ever do that so that's that crazy wow well that's been a journey for you jess because you started from basically really nothing to where you're at right now i mean yeah, and I mean, I can't, I, I can't imagine the the mental toughness you would like to get to that point where you're at right now. It's just what a yeah, dream. Well, I started, and I mean, it's never too late to start. I'm learning that every step of the way. I mean, yeah. I'm 42, starting a boxing career. You know, it's never. And when I when I started, I started 12 years ago, you know, most people wouldn't even think about starting a fitness program in this, especially one like Monkey Bar Gym at that age. They'd be like, eh, you know, eh whatever, I'll just do this kind of here and there, I'll walk on the treadmill, I'll be all right. Yeah. You know, it's basically middle age, I'm old, that's it. Yeah. But we have so many people who come in who are in their 30s and it's like they haven't even tapped into their athletic ability. Mm -hmm. I'm in my 40s and I'm starting to tap into my athletic ability. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know? that's awesome. It changes, you know, I, I, I got to say, we have, we have quite a few women there that are doing things that they would never have been able to do had it not been for the monkey bar. I mean, we have a woman named Terry Larson, who's a barefoot water skier. She is one of the best in the, world. Of the, best in the world. Wow. Because and she, she tells me, you know, it's because of this place that I can still do what I do and I can still beat women who are in their 20s. Mm -hmm. um, and she's in her late 40s. And, and the mm. big part of that is, for all you guys out there, is it's the base and the training. Mm. What, most, what most fitness places provide is really intensive <clears throat> training but not, and a lot of times not in at all a balanced manner, but there's no realigning process. And that mm. when people get into the 30s, injuries and aches and pains start to show up. In your 40s, if you haven't dealt with it, something breaks. Mm. Mm -hmm. that's what I've seen over my 36 years as a strength coach. I've seen it hundreds of times. Yeah. So the thing is before something breaks completely, and even if it does, you can still get yourself back onto the road to recovery by doing the simple movements that we do in the base class, doing simplistic type strength training type movements. Mm -hmm. And you balance those two into a nice training regime and you can really do whatever you want. Like Jesse, 42, Terry's like in her mid forties and she kills it. She's yeah. one of the top five in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it that's just, amazing. To be healthy is, is most important. Yeah. You know, and that's what we all want to feel. We all want to have the ability to do whatever we want pain free. Yeah. And that's what we try and do our best to, to have that happen in our training. Yeah. And that's awesome. See, that's, that trend, that what you guys do with the, the base program and the alignment is a big difference maker. Uh, I remember visiting you guys, seeing your mom taking the base classes and your uh, strength training, uh, strength training classes, and it's pretty inspiring. I mean, uh, to see that, and that's why I wanted to ask you guys your your origin story. It's like a superhero origin story because a lot of people think you guys have been like this your whole life, especially you, Jess. And I think it really gives hope to hear, like, you know what, she did it. You know, I can do it too. I mean, you're yeah, you're, right. you're 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 just getting into a boxing career at the age of. What'd you say? 40? I'm 42. 42? Like who does that? Who does that at age 42? But you can. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. It's just like. You have the passion for it and you have the right, you have the passion for it and you have the right, the right instructor, the right teacher. You can do whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's see. Kelly said, uh, yes, I'm a broken, uh, I'm broken at 52 and after very high intensive workouts, um, base is really helping. So she's taking your base. Uh, I have less low back uh, pain in just in just a couple of weeks. Kelly Moore awesome. is one of the strongest women in the world. Awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. She literally is one of the strongest women in the world. Yeah. But she's she like athletes. She's a she's a prime example of somebody who, despite things starting to ache and starting to pain. 
she's so strong here she can still perform at a high level mm -hmm. but then what happens like what i just mentioned is things start to break because your misalignments get further and further away from balance and that's where a little ache and pain a lot of people deal with but you can to do it at a high level of performance that's where things break then and kelly is awesome and she's a full-on warrior and we're so happy that she's doing the base classes now because like we said she, she's super high level yeah. and to, to heal her body up it will make us very happy and and i hope it'll make her yeah. very happy too yeah. <laughs> that's awesome awesome kelly that's great um so let's see here i want to get into these questions again we I don't, we never have time to go through all of them but let me get one of them that people submitted for this show here I got one from, uh, let's see, I got one from, oh, I think Kelly, I think this is the same Kelly. What benefits, uh, what benefits would a, an intense athlete, athlete receive from your program that other programs don't offer? We kind of answered that a little bit, but if you want to touch on it. What's the balance? It's the base and the training. And then also with our training, we, we want you to figure we want you to have a plan that hopefully we'll have this up next week or uh, within the week, a poster that massive action plan so that you can literally find out uh, by answering certain questions exactly what your schedule of training is. Because instead of just saying do these workouts, we want you to do the workouts that take you towards your goal. But if that is also hugely impacted by your health of your body, aches and pains, injuries and things like that, that has to be part of the equation as well. We're the only gym that has the two together in a way that delivers you a program, uh, a schedule of what you should be doing in order to get the, elicit the best uh, result that you want. Awesome. And we're going to try and get that up uh, next week, you guys. Yeah, yeah. That I mean, I'm telling you, that online fitness program is amazing. For twenty dollars per month, you get bet base classes. You get four strengthening uh, uh, programs, workouts, four conditioning. It's just amazing. I messed up my back. I, I kind of shared my story uh, like two, three weeks ago. I don't know how I messed up my back. I think I was trying to do a handstand wrong or something, but. Uh, I literally did your base program on my phone. It's mobile friendly. And I just, I just listened to your cues because I have a wireless headset and I used a broomstick and a uh, first aid kickbox so that I didn't have a yoga. I was in my conference room and I did it for 15 minutes. I was walking like I was a hundred years old. After I did it 15 minutes, I was walking like I was a Fonzie from uh, the happy days. Like, Hey, this is pretty awesome. And so I went back to work after. <laughs> well, that's uh, a good testimony, but everybody, if we do the base, you should feel lighter and you should feel more supple right after you finish the class or the, um, the sequence. <clears throat> and if you're doing, if you're doing that and you feel lighter and more supple, why wouldn't you want to do that every day and feel even more and more better? Yeah. You know, yeah. And, and instead aches and pains, misalignments cause us to feel heavier. Yeah. And that's taking us down a road. We don't want to go. Yeah. 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 Kelly said, uh, yeah, you're right, John, you're, you're fixing me and I am happier. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Uh, let's see here. I got another question coming up. Uh, let's see. I think uh, Ozzy, I, I know Ozzy just signed up for your online fitness program. He's looking to uh, take your CNT course, so he's working on that. Uh, so I, I believe he's a fitness professional from what I connected from him. But he said, when will the portable power jumper be available again? It's been sold out on tge i don't know what that is uh, maybe you meant mbg site for a while uh now thanks uh i don't i don't know what tge is but probably lifeline fitness if you go use our link mm -hmm. i would go to the lifeline fitness use our link and get it there they should have it yeah you know they're just uh, <clears throat> they were sold out of a lot of stuff for a while and they've just restocked almost all the main selling products and the power jumper is one of them and uh, if i was you i would go back on there and use our link and, and, and that helps us as well and um, we appreciate it your support there and um that that product should be available and if you're a man you know above 160 pounds i would recommend getting uh the red power jumper that's the r6 or heavier cool good suggestion yeah we'll I'll have that link uh, email to them so they could order that um, here's a good one um, that 
we kind of just touched on Sydney uh, submitted a question. I am weaker than a five year old. Where do I start? I'm 50 years old. Some five year olds can be pretty strong. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, our base, uh, we would recommend you start with alternating the base sequences every day. <clears throat> Maybe you start out doing one time through the sequence the first week and then slowly adding one more round until you're doing three or four rounds of it each day. And um, so each week you might add one more round to it. And uh, over the course of the month, you might be doing three or four rounds of that sequence. And that would be the first step for you. Uh, the second step would be doing just our simpler strength routines. So when you see the routines, you can tell if they're we have strength and we have conditioning workouts. And what I would recommend for you is just do our simpler strength workouts and focus on the form that we show you on the videos. And that will, and, and trust me on it, go slow, learn the exercises over trying to get a workout from that, from the, from the training regime. And if you do that and focus on your form, you're gonna build up a really strong foundation and that mixed with your base sequences is going to get you feeling really good. And then after a month of that, you can start to ratchet it up slowly. And then pick something that you really want to go towards. Maybe you start to do some uh, hiking. Maybe you want to go hike Mount Kilimanjaro or do something. Pick something substantial, not a 5K walk. Pick something <laughs> substantial that you want to do within the year and make it something that the rest of the people that you know and in your family and circle would all be like, what? No mm -hmm. way he's doing that. Yeah. Blow, them, blow their minds because in order for you to really change, I always think it's great to have a big carrot out there in front of you of something amazing. Yeah, yeah. It forces you to put in the work. I mean, it forces you to do it, you know. Yep. Yeah. And just start slow with the base and some of the simple strength workouts that we have each month. Awesome. Yeah. That's great. Um, let's see here. Got a question. Oh man, I just lost it. Oh, here we go. Um, oh, here's one. Here's one. Um, what are good economical vegetarian protein resources? Well, I don't know if that's a good one, but that's an interesting question. Well, you can get your protein from, you know, everything. almost everything. Um, if they're really looking for to save some money, you know, canned beans are not a bad option. Um, there are some organic tofus out there that are, are, you know, um, feasible. Um, so yeah, if he's, if they're looking for that, I would try that. I would, you know, you can try the mock meats and all that other kind of stuff, but I would prefer you stay with something that's a whole, um, plant-based food. Yeah. Um, that, that's number one. Yeah. Whole food. Mm -hmm. awesome. Keep it simple. Yeah. Or buy, buy beans and make them yourself. Um, there is one thing that you should do, though, if you do that, mm -hmm. you know, beans in bulk, um, you know, soak them, of course, overnight, or you can quickly soak them in. There's a quick way to do it, too, if you don't have enough time. But if you soak it overnight, and then when you cook them the next day, make sure that you put a piece of kombu in there so that it will help break up that first layer of beans so that you don't have so much gas, <laughs> or it's like, you know, not, it's, it'll be easier to digest. Kombu is just a seaweed, and you can buy that in, you know, the Oriental or Japanese section of your supermarket. And they're just these big sheets of, of seaweed that you can put in there, and it'll break that down. You don't, have, you don't eat the kombu. Don't eat it. Just let it <laughs> Yeah, just let it, just let it help you out. Awesome. <laughs> uh, Kelly asked, would soaked dry beans be a better choice than canned beans? Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Got it. Uh, welcome, Lucy. Good to see you. I'm gonna bring you on in just a couple minutes. I, I, you know, I got a question I've been wanted to ask you guys for a while because I kind of engage with the I, I engage with the online community, and I see some mental uh, barriers in people's minds in terms of like life getting in the way. I'm too busy to work out. How do you guys help people overcome uh, that? You know, life does get in the way. I know for me it does, and it's hard to get a workout in, and well, I don't have time. Because uh, we do talk a lot about the science of it here and stuff, but I don't think we really touched on that. Like, how do you help over, uh, people overcome that that obstacle? There's a, there's a couple of questions you have there. I mean, one is just high stress, you know, lifestyle. 
And that might not be working 60, 80 hours a week. That might just, might just be like running your own gym or having your own business. That's very high stress. Mm -hmm. uh, in that case, I, I don't recommend killing yourself with the workout because an intense workout is stressful in itself. So for that, I recommend doing simple strength stuff, doing things like push-ups, pull-ups, deadlifts, squats, and keeping them so in, in, a, in a way that they don't fry your nervous system. And they can, by themselves, really challenge you. So by not going to total failure, by not putting them into metabolic workouts, basically timed versions of those exercises, and keeping your program simple and steady over super intensive and metabolic. Now, that's a big difference. Your body will thank you because the number one thing, if you have a really stressful life, job, whatever, you don't want to <clears throat> add more stress to it. But you do want to get the benefit of training, eating right, rest, restoring the body. So doing the base stuff, good. Maybe you only do it one time through the whole sequence. You want to look at how your lifestyle is and adding and adding and adding to it might not always be the best thing. So you want to maybe put, do the sequence one time, okay? Maybe I train just three times a week. And I pick three exercises and I do simple five by five workouts for them or just some simple program or I follow just the two or three strength workouts a week. But I do them at a simple level so I don't overwhelm my system. Yeah. Okay. And you do that with the base and you're good. And that will help you a ton. Now, that's for the person that's overstressed. The person that's overworked and doesn't have a lot of time. One thing that we like that I recommend a lot is break your workout up throughout the day. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe. Like the other day, we had, I think, deadlift and push presses, I think, in a workout. Mm. If you set yourself up, maybe if you work for yourself or like at home or something like that, or, or just even while you are at work, can you go out, out somewhere and do one set of 20 push-ups every hour or so of the day? Maybe you can do that. Maybe you can get five sets in through the day. The next day, maybe you do that with pull-ups. The next day, maybe you do that with squats. Mm -hmm. These are ways to still get work in, let your body recover, and, and, and you can't, maybe if you can't even get to the gym to do the workout each day, maybe you just split up. You see what it is and say, okay, how can I split this up through the day? You won't mm -hmm. be able to do a metabolic workout like that, but can you still do 10 sets of five push ups or six or pull ups or something like that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's a really <clears throat> great way to train. And get a lot of work in over the day helps keep you wide awake as well. Yeah, this is a big stress for people that work high amount of hours and stressing in front of computers. You tax, you tax your head basically a lot, and mm -hmm. it's fatiguing. Yeah. So I think you know splitting your workout up throughout the hours of the day is an awesome way to get a lot of training done get recovered between each set and you get a lot of really good work in. And I think sometimes it can be also as simple as actually putting it in your calendar. You'll put your meetings in your calendar. You'll put when to pick the kids up in your calendar. You'll put all this other stuff in the calendar, but the workout you'll say, Oh, maybe between four and five, I can work out. Actually put it in to your calendar makes it makes you more accountable. So write it down. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then for the people, you know, that work a ton of hours, you got to prioritize your health. Nothing is as important as your health. Because if you aren't healthy, then you can't take care of those and your family, your friend, loved ones and stuff like that. And so you got to prioritize, even if it's 15 minutes, do something for yourself each day. So if you can block that time off, get to the gym, get to your place where you do the workouts each day, that's priority, I think. It's super important to take care of yourself Otherwise, you know, life doesn't care, and it will keep beating you down. Yeah. You know, your family, it, you know, the ones that – your loved ones, they get, they get the, the, the rough guy instead of the loving one because they're not taking care of themselves. Yeah. Yeah. It's the you I before – Heck, yeah. Shoot. <laughs> it's I before we before all, right? Is that the – what we're kind of going there? Even uh, for parents, you got to take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. first before the kids because i mean if you don't you will not do your kids a good a good service yeah 
Robbins, he stresses that actually. Yeah. He really talks about the marriage unit being incredibly the most important thing in the household. More than the kids. And you know, I I, I couldn't agree more. Because he yeah. said if you don't if you don't show love towards each other before love to the kids, then you're showing the kids that that relationship isn't number one. Yeah. And that's and how they grow up. You're mm. teaching them a bad lesson. Yeah. If you put work first and that your you know your your wife or spouse relationship second or third or fourth after the kids even mm -hmm. you're again teaching the kids what's important in life yeah that's what they're seen as a model yeah tony yeah. tony used to stress that stuff a lot yeah really cool yeah yeah that's awesome thank you for answering that i'm gonna bring on lucy um here she just signed up as an online fitness uh member and she's pretty excited she, uh, I guess, attended a uh, some classes with you in Madison a while back, and she moved. And she was trying to look for a gym that um, was just like yours, but she was kind of baffled she couldn't find one. So I'm going to bring you on, Lucy. Sorry, I know that's a short, short way of saying your name. I, I can't really roll my R's, even though I'm Mexican. It's embarrassing. <laughs> but um, hey, Lucy, how are you? Can you, uh, can you click on the microphone icon on the bottom, Lucy, so we can hear you? You should scroll down. There should be like a, a, a red slash over your microphone uh, icon. And if you get your mouse and scroll over the microphone, if you click on it, it'll unmute you and we could hear you. Can you find it? Oh, is she? Uh, oh, oh, she's getting back on again. Hold on. Oh, cool. I think you did it. Uh, can I can see you now. Oh, hey, how you? How you doing? I can't see you myself. Can you see? Can you can you hear us, Lucy? Can you hear us, Lucy? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Hey, how are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Good. Awesome. Good. Where where do you live? I'm now in Minneapolis. Oh, oh cool. Cool place. Very cool place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, like Armando was saying, I joined the monkey bar like 10 years ago actually wow wow yeah i still have the very base uh how i say it? like a staff like i have to work out the straps and all this stuff i bought it wow. but i never my biggest problem is i don't know how to do the correct form and how to um pay attention to the fact that i'm doing it right right now do you have are you an online member I just signed up. I think it's, this is my second week. And one thing that I'm uh, having a hard time, it's um, I think from not using it, my shoulder right, I've been having pain for the past three years. Okay. Um, I was working out at a gym in Georgia where I was, and it helped me a little bit, but no, I haven't been able to get there to where it's like I'm pain-free. Okay. Um, I did a... Uh, when I joined, like, I don't know what I did to my knee. And um, that was like some of the muscles that were hurting. And one thing that I wanted to thank you so much for taking the time to get the monkey bar and the exercise. Because with the knee, I guess, because it's very recent, like I was able to get like, seriously, like and Armando told me, just do the base and it will work. And that day I was just like, so happy because I did the base and the pain was gone from my knee and my shoulder. Yes. I know, I know, Armando. Remember you told me? <laughs> I did it that day after I talked to you and it was gone. And I was just thinking of you and was waiting for this moment to make it, you know, to tell you guys how much I appreciate the time that you have taken to learn about the body and how it functions and, you know, just because it does make a difference if you do it. And the only thing I did, um, I did do the first exercise when, when I was doing the wall, mm -hmm. that really bothered my shoulder. And since then I haven't been able to get it back in place. I only been doing the base for a week. Okay. Um, just one time in the morning, get up. That's the first thing I do in the morning. And I just would like to see if you have any feedback for me. Um, yeah. Sure. Well, you keep doing the base, like you're doing it every, it sounds like you're doing it pretty much every day. 
Every day. Okay. So, and then, and you do it one time through? One time in the morning for like, I do it like four times. Oh, good. Okay, yeah. okay, that's good. good. Like I do four reps. Four, four rounds. Four rounds. Yeah, okay. yeah four rounds. Yeah. Okay. And then um, you're brand new, but you are able to watch the videos, correct? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Are they helping you with, with fixing your form? Uh, with the form, yeah. Like, oh, definitely. Like, I actually, like, every time I hear the, the, the bass, even though it's, it's the same, like, I get, get something different. And I pay attention, I'm like, oh, I didn't do that the first time, so. That's how I am. Uh, it has, yeah, like, I have been feeling more my gluteus max that I it was numb for a month. <laughs> and just by doing the squat, I mean, I've been able to go down more. Yeah. Um, I still haven't been able to go down all the way to the uh, floor. Like, some, to, some I guess, like, I'm, I don't know, like, I'm stuck somewhere in my you know but i feel the difference um by doing it over and over and over um it has changed during this week and pretty much my knee the pain i was feeling in my knee it's gone wow. but the only one that i don't know how to fix is my shoulder the shoulder it sounds like um there's some instability in the shoulder and so when you started to do the wall walk-ups um, this, the shoulder is not stable enough yet. So what I would do if I were you is I would keep those exercises that are going body weight vertical. So that handstand walk, keep it to just the stability level and work it there and keep doing your base until that is more stable. Um, that's what it sounds like is the issue to me. On, on that, I think you were doing a wall walk up, right? She's doing it. Right. Right. So you weren't, you went on one hand and you were going inverted. inverted. Right. So for right now, uh, I, let's just keep it to real more simplistic things. So instead of doing wall walk-ups, maybe you do knee push-ups. Okay. If we are doing kettlebells and we're doing overhead presses and stuff like that, that's different. And hopefully that's not painful for you. If it is painful for you, then we just need to modify it and find something that isn't painful for you that you can do that is a pressing type exercise. Yeah. But, but for you, really pay attention right away. You got to get warmed up one and then anything, is this angle okay? Is this angle? No, no. Okay, let's not go upstairs here then. Let's just keep everything right in front of us like this. Yeah. And maybe even like, Instead of, if it gets real, if, if, if you have a serious issue where you feel like I got to put, put a lot more focus on my shoulder, mix the, that exercise and replace it with something that's a sta um, just a static hold, like incline plane that we do in the base class. Those things will strengthen, especially if you know those cues really well, stay there for like a minute and really develop that stable strength and then once you can do that for a while you're gonna, you're gonna really upgrade your, your body's ability to do more movement and when you go into the base especially when you're in the positions where you're on your hands like incline plane is a position that we'll have in the base um make sure that you're putting the weight down the center of your hand because i guarantee that you yeah. probably when you went into the wall walk up put the weight on the outside of your hands on your pinky fingers and you probably hyperextended the elbow, and then there's the lack of stability. Yeah. So when you say you mean like this part right here? Yeah, I'm talking yeah. about, yeah, because what probably happened is that when you pushed up, you pushed up and you pushed here more than you pushed here. And yeah. so then the elbow probably locked out, and then you've got all these instability issues. So when you're doing the base stuff, make sure that you put like one, two, three, four, evenly into the ground. Okay. Yeah, and then make sure that the pit of your elbow, so the elbow eye, this area here, is center and not forward. Okay, okay. so make sure, yeah. And just keep your, and even if you did it right now in place, like you put your hand like this, and you turned your elbow so that it faces this way, it's gonna start to feel different on the shoulder and keep the shoulder down away from the ear. You'll start to feel changes already, and then if you just loosen it up and turn the hand out, turn the elbow up, you can feel things are different. You want to be in a place where it's set and strong. And this will be the place that it will be, okay? 
Yeah, I guess that's exactly what happened with my with my knee. I was able to feel that with my with my uh, leg. Yeah. We're doing the squat while I was following the instruction. Yeah. And I found it like it was almost a miracle. I was so happy. Yeah. I awesome. felt it, you know, I felt it when I was able to feel my my uh, muscle and like uh, uh, gluteus max and connected to my knee and then like the pain went away. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I think like this on my shoulder, I've been having that problem for over three years and I mean, it just, I guess I just use it wrong. Yeah. yeah it's, there's a lot. Look at how, I mean, do you sleep like this? Do you work yeah. like, yeah. do you work like this? You know, maybe you need a kneeling chair. Maybe you need to sleep more on your back. Maybe you need to do more kneeling table position in, in that sequence. You know, after you've done your base sequence, which poses really make your shoulders feel great. And yeah. maybe you need to do those instead of pushing exercises for That's the next true. month. That's true. That's true. Because if you're having um, it's probably due to, of course, due to this being so short. And sometimes those positions like your incline plane might not feel so great. So the opposite position is prone mountain where you're on your belly. I know you know that one where you actually even hold the stick overhead. That's like yeah, everyone's one like, like, like that. Yeah, I, I like that one. Yeah. That one, so that one is your that's your go to. I mean, that's my go to too. I have shoulder issues that I have to deal with. You know, I deal with on a daily basis where I have to open it up before I start training. And prone mountain is my go to one because it it pulls oh, all sure, the yeah. muscles. It engages all the muscles in the back, all the extensor muscles, and it releases this and makes it open and therefore the pain will go away yeah mm -hmm. um so i've been doing just base for one week so should i start doing now like the workouts yeah i think you could probably do some strength training and, and maybe for the next while in, in place of doing any you know what a pressing exercise is like push-ups and pre military presses and stuff i don't know what's a military it's anything where we're pushing weight away or pushing up or doing any type of push movement like with our upper body. When we have one of those in the workout, maybe for the next week or two, maybe you replace it with prone mountain with stick overhead or kneeling table or incline plane, something that makes your shoulders feel good. And, and then we slowly after that gradually – you start transitioning into doing the workouts full circle. Yeah, that's it. That's an excellent suggestion, actually. That's that's what you should do. All right, cool. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, right, so, yeah that, I told uh, Armando that the goal is to eventually I want to get open a monkey bar here in Minneapolis because oh, that would yay. Be there is no – like I have gone to different gyms and it's frustrating that none of the instructor cares about your form or about you doing it right. They just doing it and they just go and it's so frustrating not having to find that help that you need to get to to your goal, you know? Yeah. Minneapolis so, is the perfect place for a monkey bar gym. I mean, yeah, I am signing for that. Yeah. Say what? very similar to Madison and it's got a, it's a, just a really nice vibe. I love Minneapolis. Yeah. Yeah. I like, I like it a lot too. It, uh, I only been here for like three months. So, yeah. but, um, for I'm sure. saying that for the, the base and the certification on March and okay. April. So oh, that'd Excellent. be awesome. Good. Excellent. We'll get to see you live in person. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. Awesome. Well, I greatly appreciate all the work that you have done through these years. I remember when I left Madison, you were starting to think about doing something online. And I'm so glad to see how much you have grown on your business. And you guys are awesome. Thanks, Thanks. so much. It was really thank nice you. to hear no. from you. And we look forward to seeing you soon. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. You have a great day. Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks, Lucy. All right. Thank you. Awesome. That was awesome. Thank you so much, John and Jess. Wow, that's some good coaching from the world's best on shoulder pain. Man, I'm serious. I mean, anybody listening to this, I'm telling you, you guys got to sign up on this online fitness program. It's amazing. $20 per month to get this type of information. It's amazing. Uh, we are raising the prices next uh, month. So 
Uh, I do got a couple more questions. We've got 10 more minutes left here. Uh, Kelly has some really good questions. Let's see. Speaking about computers, what does John suggest for people who sit all day like I do? Uh, any special exercise or movements? Oh, my God. If she's on, if Kelly's on the computer, I mean, number one, get standing up. Standing. The VersaDesk is awesome. Yeah. You can get a VersaDesk, then that way you can move it up or down. We love that. We have two or three of them at the gym. And then uh, walking around barefoot as much as possible, that's great. Uh, then, like for you, Kelly, I think what we were just talking about with Lucy, having a go-to pose that you do on the hour every hour. Maybe for you, that's prone mountain with arms out. Or uh, I know if we stick overhead for you, that might round your back a bit. So I think maybe arms out to the side yeah. is a nice pose for you that will open the body up and um, should have you feeling really good. And maybe you do a couple sets of that on every hour on the hour, like two sets of 30 or 60 seconds. That would be awesome for you. Supine bridge, always one of our favorite you know, uh, helps to open the shoulders by driving the elbows and the heels into the floor, opens the hips up. Both of those things for people that sit, is both of those is what is needed, hip opening and shoulder opening. So supine bridge and prone mountain both do a great job of that. I think the easiest to do probably for somebody at home is probably supine bridge. And just um, follow the cues as best as you can. Uh, that you have because I think supine bridge is in our base sequence and just work to get the hips up ribs down and work that tailbone towards your calves and you're gonna really open up your elbows your shoulders and your hips and that would be a feel great yeah yeah that's awesome um, Kelly also asked what kind of exercise or movements would John suggest for a, a much older person like a 70 plus yoga I'm not sure if that's a typo Kelly most likely this person would not go to a gym so, so the positions, the, like yoga positions for someone who is older? I think she said meant yoga because it's spelled Y-O-A. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think, I think so. Yeah. yeah. Well, most, most standing positions are probably the best for a person yeah. who's older. Um, my mom, she's 85, and she does all the base classes Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And uh, she loves it. And she does every single pose. So she would do supine bridge. She would do prone mountain. Uh, the standing poses, she does wide leg forward flexion. I like that one. If they don't want to get on the ground, wide leg forward flexion is a nice one. It's very similar to prone mountain. The leg actions, obviously, because you're standing and bent over at a 90 degree angle at the hips, your legs are acting differently than they would in prone mountain, but your back is still working in extension. Your arms are still working in extension. And for anybody that's older, the thing what happens to us is the body flexes more, it bends more at the hips, it bends more in the spine as we age. And what we want to do is we want to extend the spine, extend the hips. So anytime that we can do an exercise that does extension, which almost all of our base exercises do, that helps a person to lengthen their spine, to open their mind and body up, and they, and you can't you can't help but see that people smile after they leave the base class because they feel lighter and more opened up, more supple. And I know my mom does. I've seen a big difference in her. So, what does Kelly say about her mom? She said her mom's afraid to get up and down off the floor. Okay. Yeah, and I think that if she's all hunched over, because I saw that as well. Why? Yeah, yeah. She actually might not want to bend over. So there are a couple of things that we can do. Um, I think Kelly is familiar with the standing wide leg against the wall with the arms out to the sides. Um, that would actually be a good one for her mom. Um, and then maybe even uh, that wall dog that we've done with her mom standing a little bit more vertical. Kelly knows exactly what we're talking about. And if she was to go back and forth with those two exercises and hold them for 15 seconds if she wants um, and round robin that three times and say she's done with it um, That'd be great. And I think another thing is to put it on a, on a schedule for her She does it the same time every single day. She does the yeah. exact same thing every single day so that she can get ownership of it That's what I do. Um, so standing wide leg against the wall and wall dog against the wall um, And make a program for her, Kelly. She should be great with that. Yeah, I, I, I that's perfect advice and then slowly just 
add a little bit more to it as the weeks go by. And I think that's perfect. Huh? Good yeah. call. Yeah. Awesome. Um, she also asked, speaking of affiliates, Jim, gyms, would attending an MBG in a, in a place other than Madison, would it be run the same as the Madison mothership? Yes. They follow the same workouts. Uh, their gym, of course, will probably look quite different, but everybody follows exactly the same workouts. They do the base. They do the training. They all are plant-based. They all know how to teach all three parts of what, all three points that we're talking about. And um, they all come and they get higher level education. We do an elite training series that is, um, it's literally called the CNT Elite. And we just started that this year and we have quite a few affiliates that are, are taking part of it. And it's our basic training, but on its highest level. And uh, it's quite in depth. And the, the trainers that are, are coming out of it are just amazing. They can do all aspects of everything that we do at the Monkey Bar Gym to a really high level. And we're really excited about it. Yeah. That's awesome. Great, great. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, those, uh, you guys are just upping the level in education with these courses. It's amazing. I talked to Sean, I think on Monday or Tuesday, and he was just telling me everything about it. He was like, it was flipping awesome, Armando. You got to, you got to be uh, at these elite trainings again. But, uh, something that's so amazing about it. What's that? Something that we're doing at the CNT courses and what we're really, promoting at these elite training courses, which for anybody interested, you have to take the CNT one before you can take the elite. And um, what we're teaching is not just how to, not just how to do an exercise, but how to be a leader, how to really teach. And, you know, not just, you know, recite information, but how does a person really go about doing that at an extremely high level? And that is, is completely different. No one is doing this anywhere in the country. Yeah. And every every elite trainer that came to our course from all over the country, uh, they're they're really raving. Uh, it, it, I have never heard any comments like this before. I mean, I've always heard, of course, is awesome. But right now, they're taking this this and like it's blowing my mind how this is taking my business from here, but now I see I can grow it even that much more just by my presentation of this information. And that's really key. Personality is one of the most important things I've always said as a trainer. You can have the highest knowledge base, but if you have the worst personality, no one wants to learn from you. But on the other hand, if you have a great personality and no knowledge base, again, people aren't gonna, they're gonna want good knowledge, great personality, that's an awesome marriage that results in people wanting to come to you to learn and grow with you. I just saw that Kelly Moore said she took the uh, CNT course quite a while ago, and I would invite you to take the uh, series, the, the CNT Elite series. We have another one coming up in 2016. We'll get those dates out to you. Um, it's it's an awesome course, like John said, it, and it's split up into three big sections. Um, the very first section that you take is, is pretty much learning all about you. Um, you go home and you practice some of the simple and strong techniques that we have, and the second one teaches you exactly how to, how to be a teacher, how to be a leader, how to be a strong force in your community. Um, and it's, it's, you know, through exercise, through fitness, but, and it's, it's spiritually challenging, mentally challenging, physically yeah. challenging, and that's, that's what we do at the gym. Um, and the very last one is, is actually you putting it in, into action and teaching a live CNT course. Um, it, uh, Kelly, I would love for you to, to join that program. Um, it would be great. And, and for those of you that are listening out there, if you ever, like I said last time, if you ever want to come to a CNT course, this is going to be an amazing one. All the elite trainers are going to be there. Jess and I, of course, will be there. And it, it's going to have a lot of really great stuff going on. Plus, you're going to get a ton of personalized attention because we're going to have so many high-level trainers, trainers that are supporting you. Awesome. And that's the for the CNT course in April, the 22nd? Yes. Okay, and that's CNT1, right? Yeah, CNT1. We still have an early bird discount uh, until February 22nd. So, you know, if you are interested, please email me. I'm starting to fill this course up. So the faster you contact me, the better. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's the one. That's the one I'm I'm going to because I'm not certified yet. I contacted you contacted you years uh, a couple of years ago about that. I'm really excited, and I love how you guys are taking the science and also having the art part of it too, which is again yeah. nobody's doing that in the country. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they teach you about the science, but the art part of being a leader and a teacher, what you touched on, Jess, man, that gets me so fired up. Um, it's a, it's we got like less than a minute left. Actually, we're pretty much done here. Uh, just wanted to do a, one a quick announcement for the courses that we got going on. CNT course one is in Madison on April the 22nd through the 24th. All the elite trainers are going to be there. We have early, early bird discounts, like Jessica said. Email her at jessica at monkeybargym.com. The base course, uh, which we talked about when we talked to Lucy, uh, is going to be on March 19th. Okay, so email Jess for that. Um, the online fitness program, we are raising the prices next month to $39.99. Uh, right now it's $19.99. You get base courses, you get strength training workouts, conditioning, uh, you get feedback from people in the community. We have a private Facebook group and that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Hey, I think we got cut off here. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you guys hear me? No? Well, um, I think they got dropped off too. So I'm going to go ahead and end this. Thanks so much, everybody, for joining. John and Jess, if you guys can hear me, I'm going to end this meeting here. Um, and we'll catch you guys next week. Okay, cool. Yeah, thanks, Kelly. I'm going to go ahead and end it. Thanks so much for your questions, Kelly. Great questions. And I look forward to seeing you on the next webinar, okay? You guys have a good night. Bye.